Uh, my name is Sarah Grace Monroe, and I'm, in my other life, I was a history teacher. Although my students didn't care about history, I loved it. Uh, I taught um, sixth grade social studies, seventh grade Texas history, and eighth grade American history. They were more interested in who was a brick house and who wasn't, and what was the latest song and dance. <laughs> so I did that for almost 12 years, and that was enough. But what I did with my family, because back in the old days, I'm 70 plus, 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 and I had to hang around all the women in the family. So I, that meant I was in the kitchen a lot. And people have asked me, why did I do a family history cookbook? It's because I collected recipes, and, and I knew all the good cooks in the family. Thankfully, most of them were. Now, on your... Um, I wanted to start out because it, it's um, kind of hard to explain, but until I had my DNA test results, I didn't realize all the things I'd heard about my family were true. So I put some of the names up here. We, we have French names, and they misspelled them because a lot of them couldn't read or write. So uh, Simeon was my mother's uh, maiden name, but they said the priest misspelled it, so half of the family is S-I, the other half S-E. My Grandma Grace um, surname was a German name, Horst, and old people called it Hals, uh, but her mother and father are buried here, um, the chapel boards, which I found out I lived in England almost 22 years, and it's actually the first chapel boards were near, um, if, if you know anything about England, Gatwick uh, Airport. It was actually a place that was, and board is where you cross a river or a stream. And the shackle wasn't like shackle as you think about, they were for pulling the ropes across the river. So, um, so, so we got French, German, and this name, Krebser, that was um, from the Netherlands. And I was wondering why my DNA, I had people from the Netherlands, but I have two ancestors who were born in the Netherlands. And then I found out Howard. Recently, I'm finding out more um, maiden names for, for on my grandparents' side. Now, my, I bought my name back. I'm, I was married, living in England, and when my late husband passed away, I went back to my maiden name, Munro. But it's actually from Scotland, it's spelled M-U-N. So in England, I was constantly correcting the way they spell Munro, because it's the Scottish way is M-U-N-R-O, but some Monroes put an E. Uh, the Allens, England. Franks, Germany. Graves, England. And this one, that's another name that was from the Netherlands. So it's all, uh, this is another one from the Netherlands. And Johnson, Whittington, and then Hobbes. So I wanted to give you an idea. From my DNA, the, the next sheet, you'll see what I'm talking about. When they ask, where are you from, they, I, I don't even know where to tell them. Now, from my DNA, one of my ancestors, the only thing they said, he was a full-blooded Cherokee. His name was Jefferson Ridge, and he was a farmer in Arkansas. So with the Horace family that's buried down the way, they were the slave owners, Lewis and uh, Marguerite, or they called her Mary Horace. So, so I have German. Eastern Europe, Germany, France, England, Scotland, Ireland, Togo and Benin are the two West African uh, nations. And um, Syria and Afghanistan, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> uh, Syria had, um, in, in Togo, there was a, a section that had people from Syria. Sweden, Norway, Russia, and the Netherlands. So I'm, I'm from everywhere. But I just want to give you an idea, because when I started doing the recipes, I found out a lot of the things that um, the recipes were, like my grandma Grace, um, I need to pass this out, I don't want to talk too long and, and bore you, if I could get someone to pass these out. Now, I picked grandma Grace's recipes, but I have recipes from all of my ancestors, recipes that represent Togo and Benin, and what I found out, Grandma Grace was born in 1905, and she made everything from scratch. 
But because her mother was a Shackleford, she had British type dishes. Um, her father was uh, Ed Horse. She made German type cakes and things. And she was really a strict old lady. And everybody in the family in Austin, in East Austin at the time, knew Grandma Grace. But um, some of her recipes show what, what they ate everything. And I used to hang around her all the time. I said, Grandma, I can't eat that. And she would try to make you eat hog head cheese. I said, Grandma, I'll be sick in the stomach if you make me eat that. And um, so she didn't make me eat that, plus I was named after her, Sarah Grace, and she was named Grace. So I got away with a lot of stuff my brothers didn't. But I tried to do the recipes kind of centered around the, all the different parts of the family history. I had one ancestor who was actually, he rode with the cattle drives, so I put some cowboy recipes in the book to, in honor of him, and um, you know, to make things interesting, and I'm a glutton for punishment, I not only researched my family, I researched Grandma Grace's siblings. So the, the book got kind of thick, and the lady on the front cover is Frances Dinsmore, who was a slave for the horse family that's uh, buried on the other side of the street. And then on the, the old grounds, they call it, or the colored grounds, I have uh, the former slaves. So, so, so I get both of them here. And, but my family, the thing I like about them, they came from these roots, like Grandma Grace owned a lot of land. She didn't trust banks in Austin, so we had to take her to San Antonio to a bank, Bastrop to a bank, Temple to a bank. We say, Grandma, and she didn't drive. So how she got around, I don't know. But, you know, they knew how to make it and get along. So some of the recipes are things people have never heard of. So that's to give you an idea of growing up around Grandma Grace. And, um, and she had this huge pot and would make this kettle, I call it, in the backyard, build a fire under it, make lye soap, and give it to the neighbors. And it's not like the lye soap you think about that would take your skin off. It was a creamy color, uh, light, didn't smell like lye or anything, but she would give it to the neighbors, cut it up in bars and give it away. Um, and she made stuff like cottage cheese. You're like, who makes their own cottage cheese? But she did it and would hang it up in these balls. And I was supposed to be learning. I'm like, and she didn't like regular chickens. She raised guinea fowls. I said, Grandma, I was scared of chickens. And so I would get out of stuff. But I said, I'm not going out there and kill a chicken and cook it. But, um, but I just want to kind of give you an idea. Growing up with all this different stuff going on is that um, I just like people. And everybody has a story. Like, when you were telling your story, I read about your ancestor. Because I like history, so I read about everybody's history. And um, a good friend where I live, I live in a senior community. And she said, Sarah, my great-grandmother's buried in Austin, but I don't know where. And all she had was a lady's name. I told her I found it, sent it to her that night. And I said, um, I'm going up there. i got some pictures for you. But because you like history, you, you don't mind. Uh, going through and looking for people and I was going to try to stay on track I actually have an outline you know the teacher in me is trying to be organized but the main thing I wanted people to know is that it, it was people when we grew up what John would know you, you start reading about these names because we went to school with somebody named Shackleford we went to school with someone named Howard or someone named Ross and all of these names they start falling into place. And one big mistake I made for people who are interested in genealogy is that I waited until a lot of the ancestors had passed on. And so I got first cousins who were older and got a lot of information from them. And I was just surprised that um, in our family, the things that, that I didn't know about people, you know, they never said anything because I always felt like and, and I appreciate Jennifer being kind, because in my family, I don't have anybody that I think was really famous. One of my um, Shackleford relatives, Clarence Shackleford, was a vaudeville singer or something, but he would come through, he rode the rails, 
I don't say that's not exactly um, a famous person, but he's buried over in um, in San Antonio. But but it was people like that, and because I was a girl, I had to stay around all the women, so I knew all the gossip. I get in trouble too because I asked my mother. I say, "What's torment?" Because they said something about a bat out of a torment, and she said, "You shouldn't have been listening." But I'm sitting right there next to you, you know. And um, so it was things like that and growing up in Austin, I really enjoyed it. We lived down on Paquita Street, Grandma Grace on one end of Paquita Street, then my great-grandmother, Sarah, and we had friends and relatives all up and down the same street. So East Austin was home. And uh, someone had asked, how did you get along with people? I said, we were all in it together. We were all there together. And uh, if you had something or, or extra, you would give it to your neighbors or if your neighbors needed something. And that was the type Austin I grew up in. Um, and I always come back. I stayed in England a long time, but when the grandkids came along, I didn't want them to think Granny lived in on FaceTime. So mm -hmm. I did come back home, but I found out that British connection that um, when I was over there, it, it was so many different surnames and things that were actually from England and, and and the food and things that Grandma Grace would cook. She made marmalade like they do in England. She made uh, mince pies and, and it was just amazing to me. She was cooking what the slave owners would have had her to cook. Although she wasn't a slave, her mother was. Her mother's maiden name was Shackleford. And, and then she made these German dishes. She made homemade sauerkraut. That did not smell good, but she made it. <laughs> and, um, and, and they expected you to eat what they put on the table. I, I didn't like pigeons or other birds that she would cook. I didn't like fish where the eyes were looking at you. <laughs> so at Grandma Grace's house, I had a hard time trying to eat because she would just cook. But she made good biscuits and um, she taught me how to make pie crust. She made really good pie crust. But I had, um, you know, the, the relatives, it's funny, they didn't talk about slavery. They didn't say anything about it. One of my grandma Zora's um, relatives, her sister actually mentioned about a relative being lynched. Nothing else, no name. It was in Quero, uh, DeWitt County area. But no one else mentioned it. It was like it was a taboo, a, you know, a no-no. But when I grew up, you didn't really know about such because older people kept things from you. Not, not like some of my former students who knew too much. <laughs> they would tell me stuff. I'd come up and say, do you have a match? I have a marijuana. I'd say, you got a what? <laughs> I, I wouldn't have been so shocked if it was a regular cigarette. But, but we didn't know stuff. They didn't tell us. So, um, but, but I hope you, the, the things, I, I've been doing this so long, I, I help other people a lot more than I help myself because I say their families are more interested. And, um, but, but the main thing I tell people in doing the family, I had one cousin who told me she only wants to know about the Ross family. I said, you can't know about one surname. Those people got married. In fact, my great-grandmother's sister married a Ross. So you're actually a distant cousin of mine. You, you can't cut out the Shackleford's and the other people who married into the Ross family. Because I knew her people. You know, they would take me to everybody's house. And, and um, one funny thing when I was writing the book, back in the old days, it would be cousin Jesse and uh, uh, cousin Lucy, Miss Lucy, and I found out some of those people were not relatives. <laughs> I did a whole section on the Masons, and my brother uh, said, he said, Sister, we're not kin to the Masons. I, I said, but they say it's our, they're our cousins. They said, no, they're not. <laughs> so, so that's another thing. In our neighborhood, they just, and, and Miss Lucy lived by herself. I actually thought she was a relative. And it was kind of funny to find out that they just kind of took them in. And uh, when it was mentioned about adopting people where I live, I just said, I have several sisters. I say, oh, I'm going to adopt you. And some of the staff, if they're nice to me, I'll adopt them. But it's, it's um, the, the thing, it's like Texas pulls you back. 
because it's people who understand. In, in England, they did not understand where I was coming from. Uh, so, so I'm back home now and I'm finding more stuff out because it was really interesting with the Munros, they were actually up in Massachusetts, some of them were free, and I was shocked, they actually spelled it the Scottish way. I had a lady to tell me, she said, uh, oh Munro, you must be from Louisiana. I said, no, I'm sorry, my Munros are from Inverness, Scotland, <laughs> which I actually have been to Inverness, Scotland, there wasn't anything much to be bragging on, but that, that's the thing. You hear a last uh, surname, you don't know where that's traveled around. So um, I want to ask uh, for questions if you have anything to kind of ask and to make it really easy so I'll know the answer. <laughs> oh, sorry. I think the recipes, Grandma Grace's recipes. Oh my God! I, I love some of that. <laughs> well, the thing what I tried to do was have a variety because I actually used to collect recipes, and I have some recipes. Um, but with Grandma Grace, since she made everything from scratch, it was just strange that uh, that old lady could make anything. Any she could cook anything. Some of the stuff people wouldn't eat, but um, <laughs> but she would cook it. She made a bird pie, and this is true. It had the legs sticking up. I said, Grandma, I'm not eating those bird legs sticking out of the pie. But but she, I guess her mother taught her that kind of stuff. But what I tried to do was give you a sample of how people ate and um, things that they would buy at the butcher shop that they don't, I don't even think they sell some of that stuff now. Um, but yeah, with Grandma Grace, it was easy to pick out stuff because she made everything. Like, like that, I had a young lady, um, I was talking to her, she said, what is that blue? Blueing, what is that? I said, yeah, she's young. Um, so I explained to her they use that in doing laundry. But Grandma Grace loved making bleach and put bleach in everything. Her dishwasher smelled like bleach. She, you know, everything, she, she sanitized, I guess, using bleach, but she made her own. And, um, but that's a good person. Anybody else? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, hi, John. Sorry. It's amazing. Uh, earlier today, uh, I was, my brother and I was talking about, about food. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to Sarah's uh, 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 here's, here's speech today about food. And the uh, first thing he said, ask her, how do you cook a ribeye steak? <laughs> but we, I know back in the day, my grandparents, they used to use every bit of an animal. When they That's right. That's food, right. And all the way down to the chimney, the lump, the all the cheese, the everything. Yeah, they didn't waste. So, that is now, true. Now, you know, you said you'd be a resource person to help out with it. But, um, and people always tease me because I love to eat. I used to, I could eat my brothers under the table. I didn't gain an ounce, but I could eat. So, so some of the other recipes I wanted to mention, I didn't print them off, but Grandma Grace's brother was named Walter, and he was a, a cook for the railroad, and he worked the line between Austin and Chicago. And every winter he'd stay in Texas, and then he'd go back to Chicago. Now he could cook, but he liked, he made like, instead of coleslaw, he made hot slaw. Um, and I would be hanging around in the kitchen waiting on him to start cooking. But, but it was a lot of cooks, and that's a good way to open up and talk. Um, I've made friends with everyone in the bistro where I stay, uh, friends with everyone in the dining room and kitchen. So they see me come and they give me extra portions because I do like to eat. But in, in this book, I tried to hit up on different things. And one of the funny things about those two West African nations the spices have different names, but it's stuff the way I like to cook. Because I like a lot of soups and stews, uh, casseroles, one pot dishes uh, that's easy to clean up, easy to cook. And, um, and I notice the type peppers and things and, and seasonings they use, that's, uh, that's what I cook with. And I thought that was interesting. But I tried to bring it all in and especially for the young people in the family that have never heard of some of this stuff, that um, it, it is our history through food. So um, I think I've gotten just about everything. I had my outline. Oh, one interesting thing about Oakwood Cemetery, I finally counted all the relatives that I knew 
and ancestors who were buried here, and it came out to be 20. And so it's 19, like through the horse relatives, the, um, their, the German family, and the uh, it was uh, like 21 or so uh, in the old ground or the colored section. So it was kind of even, even with the, with the ancestors. And when my great grandfather passed away back in the 1930s, two of the horse uh, sisters, uh, my, my, um, his father was named Charles Horse, and it's the weirdest thing. I found him in, in 1880 in El Paso, and after that, I don't know. I don't know what's happened. And, and, but, and I'm still looking for him, but it, it was just kind of interesting. I, I never thought about it until I was contacted by, by Jennifer and her staff about Oakwood because I put things on find a grave. And, and I do have people who contact me, and they think I know everything. They'll say, well, well, who was this one married to? I'll say, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know, you can't find a record of it. And, um, and I try to confirm all the information I find, like how this person is kin to me and um, things like that. Try to find some kind of records. And I've just, you know, any, any helpful hints I do share with other people. Because I've been doing this a long time since uh, I started in 1994, and by 1995 I was putting it together. 1997 I did my first book. It wasn't anything like this. It was just information I found. I put it in a three-ring binder and gave it to my siblings. I said, if something happens to me, take this and, and research. So um, you have to change every time. I did a book in 2005, and then. Um, 2019, I did another one. So for 2022, I want to update again to where we are now. Because people, you know, have children, people pass away. And that's, it, it's, it's constant. You, you don't ever finish, I guess, until uh, I'm not here anymore. Hopefully someone will pick it up. Now, are there any more questions? Uh-oh. <laughs> I was just joking. No, I'll take it. <laughs> I just have a question. Mm -hmm. Fresh oh my gosh. <laughs> Colorado River, Grandma Grace's favorite grocery store. <laughs> and then, uh, I didn't mention this one because it's so horrible. Jelly eel. I didn't put that one on there. Jelly it, ge like the gelatin? The, ge the gelatin? They took that eel. The Brits do that. And my late husband said, You want to try? I'm like, No, no, don't show it to me. But yeah, jelly eel. But they came out of the Colorado. And over in England, it's a place called Ely. And in Old English, it was Eel's Island. They, they got these little contraptions. They catch them in like a little um, cane basket or something. The eels swim in there and you can't get them out. And I'll say, I'm not eating anything that looks like a snake. So, <laughs> so I didn't eat the eels. But I'm sorry, you're a snake. Um, yeah, did you have a question? I do. Um, mm -hmm. So I was thinking about the kind of answer that where was your grocery store and where sources of meat? Oh my gosh. Did you, did you, you know what was funny? Farm? My family, Grandma Grace, Grandma Grace's house was actually at 2015 Coquita. They torn it down now. And, and that old lady just had land. She had that house at 2015, bought the house next door. And, um, but my uh, Sarah, horse lived at 1919 East 12th. So it was a um, like a barbecue pit or something. I don't know what they call that. But they sold meat. And they would buy this meat. They, I don't think they sell it in the stores now. But they would go up there and buy meat. And they wouldn't call it like, they'd, be, they'd, go up, they'd buy mutton. Well, what is mutton nowadays? You know, they wouldn't say lamb or something like that. Uh, but they, that's what they would do. And a lot of the stuff they would um, grow, um, my great-grandmother actually had a smokehouse. And one weird thing, it was kind of weird, there were a lot of women in the family named Sarah. They never told me about them. Uh, one uh, great-great-grandmother was named Sarah, who was married to Moses Monroe. And um, 
There was a little girl who's buried in Bethany named Sarah Horace. She was about five when she died. They never mentioned these other Sarahs. And I thought that was strange and unusual because I was actually, I knew my great grandmother. I used to go to Great Mount Zion Nursery and then back over to her house to wait on my mother. And she liked, um, she was a slave and she liked oysters and stuff, but she'd never been to the coast. And, I, and she would make the dressing and put oysters in it. Of course, that did it for me. I didn't like the way they looked. So they would go down to the quality seafood and get seafood. Uh, I knew all the different kind of fish and the ones I liked and didn't. Um, but, but it was just interesting. I was hanging out in the kitchen with them. So when I started doing, and I have to, Michael is gonna be surprised. I actually got the idea for the family history book from a friend up in Nebraska. Her family had a family reunion and they would have a picture and a little story under it. I said, hmm, that's so interesting. So I read hers, it was like a pamphlet. And I said, I'm gonna do that. And then when I got to do it, I said, oh yeah, I forgot I have her recipes. And so I started adding recipes in the book. When I did the book, my late husband and I had 95 copies printed. I gave them to family and friends. And then when I updated it in 2019, to celebrate the big 7-0, I had 55 copies printed for um, uh, my siblings and their children, their grown-up children. So I didn't really make it for the public, but now I'm working on that to, you know, to, to get it out there. Maybe it'll inspire somebody else, because it is a lot of work, but I'm glad someone was interested. No one else, look, all these years, no one else wanted to hear about it. And one thing I did uh, on the pictures, people were nice enough, so I had a handheld scanner and would scan pictures when, when I was, because I never saw the Simeon relatives until I started on this book. I couldn't even sleep. My mother never, never saw her father or her grandfather. She never met her. They were from, they said Opelousas, Louisiana, but they were actually from Lebeau. Uh, and then they all left Louisiana and moved to California to work in the Navy yards. So she never met them. And I was so excited about that. But, but I try to tell people, because I like history, I don't mind looking through um, census records. I tell people I don't have a life. You want your people um, research, I'll do it. Because I'm running out of my people to research. But, um, but yeah, I just, um, I, I never thought about talking about the book. Because when I'm researching, I'll burn the midnight all and stay up too late. But I, I'm glad you all came to hear about it, because it was, um, it's a labor of love. So it just, it came together over the years, but I enjoy it. And this is the first time I have ever talked about it. So I fed the butterflies before it started. I went to lunch. I said, so it calmed the butterflies down, but you all have been lovely because I don't know what I'm talking about doing this. <laughs> my, my own history. I'm used to teaching other people's history. But thank you. I do appreciate your kindness. Thank you.